the worst thing you can do is ignore any any potential risk from alien technology but it could be a serial killer so you know there will be a sense of urgency and uncertainty just like you see a visitor to your backyard and the concern is the visitor will show up in your front door you know so you have to worry about what to do in a short time two objects one from outside our solar system one so large it barely fits the word comet and both are behaving in ways they shouldn't let's start with the clearest image of three eye atlas we've seen so far this isn't a simulation this is real data, real photons captured by a telescope staring at a speck of light 400 million kilometers away. Look at the structure, the coma glowing around the core, a main tail flowing backward like we'd expect. But then there's this, a sharp forward-facing streak pointing ahead of the nucleus. In older images, this feature was faint, almost invisible. Now it's bright, defined, structured, and it doesn't look random, it looks focused. This wasn't a quick snapshot. It took 57 stacked exposures, each 60 seconds long, almost an hour of total light collection, just to reveal what you're seeing. Amateur astronomer, real sky, real tracking, real calibration. That forward jet shouldn't exist. Interstellar objects aren't supposed to vent material ahead of themselves. Gas and dust flow backward, pushed by solar wind, not forward. Yet, there it is. Hit subscribe, because what comes next isn't just strange, it's a pattern. And the second object makes it impossible to ignore. This is raw telescope data. At first glance, it looks like noise, stars streaking through the frame, but look at the center, that dark circular blob. That's 3i Atlas. Now watch what happens after heavy processing. Rotational gradient filters, Larsen Seconina techniques. Tools astronomers use when they're searching for hidden structures inside a comet's coma. That tiny bright point in the center? That might be our first real look at the nucleus. Look at how the stars streak. Now look at the bright point in the center. It doesn't move with the stars. It doesn't smear. It stays locked to the object. Multiple processed frames. Same bright point. Same location. That's not noise. That's signal. But three, I Atlas isn't the only strange object out there right now. Meet C2014 UN271, also known as Bernardinelli Bernstein. This thing is enormous, around 150 kilometers in diameter, one of the largest comet-like objects ever observed. But it doesn't behave like one. It has already shown outbursts of activity far past Saturn. Scientists have detected carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and ammonia coming off its surface. That kind of activity shouldn't happen this far from the sun. Right now, it's near the orbit of Uranus, slowly moving inward. But here's what makes it truly strange. At its closest approach, it won't even cross Saturn's orbit. Its perihelion is expected to be around 1095 astronomical units. Most comets dive deep into the inner solar system, racing past Earth and Venus, heating violently as they approach the sun, this one doesn't, which means it has probably never warmed up before. Its internal material is ancient, untouched, extremely volatile, and we have no idea how it's going to behave as it gets closer. It could stay calm, or it could erupt. Massive outgassing, huge jets, non-gravitational acceleration that changes its trajectory in ways we can't predict. And because of its size, any activity it shows happens on a completely different scale. This is considered the second largest comet-like object ever observed. Whatever we decide to call it, comet or object, one thing is clear. It's massive, it's active, and it's slowly moving inward. Let's step back. 3. I. Atlas, the third interstellar visitor ever detected, racing through our solar system with a forward jet that shouldn't exist. A nucleus that stays bright and structured even under heavy processing. Chemistry dominated by carbon dioxide and nickel, not water ice. And now, C2014 UN271. A giant from the outer solar system, active far beyond where comets should show any signs of life. Releasing gases that require warmth, yet it's still near Uranus, where temperatures hover near absolute zero. Two objects, different origins, same problem. They're both doing things that don't fit our models. And the closer we look, 
the more questions pile up. Go back to that first image of 3i Atlas, the one with the forward jet. Astronomers have been analyzing it for weeks, comparing it to older frames, checking for instrument artifacts, running simulations to see if solar wind could explain it. It can't. Solar wind pushes material backward. Radiation pressure pushes material backward. Every known force in space pushes material backward away from the sun. Yet that jet points forward, ahead of the nucleus, as if the object is venting material in the direction it's traveling. Some researchers suggest it could be an optical illusion, light scattering off dust in a specific geometry that makes it look forward facing when it's actually angled to the side, but multiple observations from different angles show the same structure, and it's getting brighter. C-2014 UN-271 was discovered in 2014, but astronomers didn't realize what it was until 2021. By then, they had years of archival data to comb through, and what they found was alarming. The object had been active for years, releasing gas, expanding its coma, all while still beyond Neptune's orbit. Normal comets don't do this. They need sunlight, heat, energy to sublimate ice and create the clouds of gas and dust we associate with comets. UN-271 was doing it anyway, as if something inside was generating its own energy, or as if its internal chemistry was so volatile that even the faint warmth of distant sunlight was enough to trigger reactions. Scientists measured the outbursts, calculated the energy output, and realized something unsettling. The object shouldn't have enough internal heat to sustain this level of activity. Not naturally, which means either our models are wrong or UN-271 is powered by something we don't understand. 3. I Atlas is already moving away from the sun. It passed perihelion in October 2025. Now it's climbing back out, accelerating as it escapes our solar system forever. Every day it gets dimmer, harder to observe, harder to track. Within months, it will be too faint for most telescopes. Within a year, it will be gone. We have one shot to figure out what it is, and the window is closing. C-2014 UN-271, on the other hand, is just beginning its approach. It won't reach perihelion until 2031. We have time, but every observation so far suggests that as it, as it gets closer, it's going to get stranger. If it erupts the way some models predict, it could become one of the brightest objects in the night sky. A giant glowing cloud visible to the naked eye, even though it never comes closer than Saturn. And if it doesn't erupt, if it stays calm despite all the activity we've already seen, that might be even more troubling because it would mean the object is stable in ways natural comets aren't. Two objects. Different origins. Same refusal to follow the rules. 3. I Atlas with its forward jet, its structured nucleus, its unusual chemistry. C-2014 UN-271 with its impossible size, its early activity, its slow march inward. Both are being watched by every major telescope on Earth. Both are generating data that doesn't fit our models. And both are forcing astronomers to ask a question no one wants to say out loud. What if we're not looking at comets? What if we're looking at something else, something ancient, something that survived billions of years in deep space, something that only reveals itself when it passes close to a star? We don't have answers yet, but we have images. We have data. And we have a pattern that's becoming harder to ignore.